This is the very awesome Easy Motion Evo Jumper. In 2013, I bought an Easy Motion Neo Jumper. It looked very, very similar, same kind of color scheme and everything. Um, but since that time, they've upgraded the motor instead of a 350 watt internally geared hub motor by Dapu. Now they have a 500 watt, so you get a little bit more power with that. And they've upgraded the battery as well. This is 48 volt instead of 36. Unfortunately, I can't really give you a lot of feedback on how it compares because this one's a little bit broken right now. Um, <laughs> if you're an Easy Motion electric bike owner and you've experienced this, please chime in. But um, I've had this several times today. I'm at the headquarters in Southern California. I'm looking at a bunch of demo bikes that have just been kind of left to sit, not kept charged, uh, not used, maybe crashed if they were at demo events. It's it's sad, kind of, but you know that's the process of innovating the new designs and testing everything and you know these guys are working on other projects and so what happens is i'll get one of these the battery will be completely dead i'll charge it up and then some of them it, the little indicator right here where it says percentage right now it says 21 percent because i've been charging it but it just sticks at zero percent and you can't arrow up arrow down nothing really works and so i've swapped batteries and it seems to solve that it seems like the control unit is built into the battery and um, in this case i was able to take the battery off with these keys a bunch of times, kind of take it off over here, put it back on, took the display on and off, and I got it working. So now it, at least it shows your speed, your trip distance, your total distance, odometer, all that stuff, pedal assist levels, I can change them. And this thing's backlit, so if I hold down uh, on the arrow, the light comes on. So everything seems to be functioning, but the motor's not activating, okay? So I've heard other things like error 13, and there's some conversations going on in the, um, community forums that I have back at electricbikereview.com. Feel free to chime in. I'm not sure what's going on. Usually the employees and stuff just kind of help me get this going, but uh, I wanted to call it out. Um, still wanted to review it and give you my, my feedback because I've been testing a whole bunch of other easy motion electric bikes and they all use the same uh, motor system, the same battery. Um, generally, some of them have, you know, higher voltage. Uh, uh, the four wheel drive ones have different motors, but I'm very familiar with this system and I can say it's zippy. It's kind of fun to pedal with compared to some of the mid drives. I mean, they're going to be a little bit more balanced and give you a bit more power and torque, but this isn't bad. Yes, there's some unsprung weight and the way this suspension is set up, it's going to be harder to hang this on your car versus sort of the horse link ones that you're seeing a lot now on high bike and specialized. Um, they are going to reduce bobbing a little bit more. And this does have a little bit of rebound adjust. This is a Monarch from RockShox, but it's, there is some bobbing, definitely some bobbing going on. There's remote lockout for the front fork. This is RockShox XC30. And that's kind of nice, you know, it's an air fork. So it's relatively light. This whole thing is like 53 pounds. I was amazed because, you know, you have the larger motor, larger battery pack, and it is, a, it's a live battery. Some of them have fake batteries at their headquarters just for like, sh you know, showpiece kind of a thing. This one does not, it's working, it's powering the display. The rest of the bike just is not working. Uh, so anyway, let's keep going. SLX derailleur up front, two sprockets, 28 and 40. And then back here, 11 by 36 in that gear cluster. Shimano Dior XT, great stuff. Um, you know, I think that's a great range for climbing and for getting to that 20-ish. That's the top assisted speed on this bike. And one of the changes since I got my Easy Motion Neo Jumper all those years ago is that there's no longer a twist throttle. Okay, so they've dropped the throttle on a lot of their off-road bikes so that they are class one, which makes them permissible on more trails in California. That's where we're at. That's where most electric bikes seem to be sold in the United States. So I can understand that, but I was a little bit bummed. I mean, I use mine for commuting and stuff, even though there's no rack bosses, no bottle cage. You know, this thing is totally just meant for like off-road riding and stuff. But for me, I can only afford one electric bike. This thing's expensive. Again, $43.99. Um, so I wanted it to do everything and I appreciate the comfort of full suspension. I thought this looked really cool. The battery is so well integrated. It's just seamless. It's beautiful. But you know, that's the trade-off. Now you don't have a twist throttle. You have to rely on pedal assist the whole time. The bikes from Easy Motion, most of them, except for like the Xenion Bosch powered ones, right now they use um, a TMM4 torque sensor, which just measures the strain. So how hard you're pedaling, how hard you're pushing. It works pretty well. It's fluid, but they've delayed the cutout. So you don't get surge. Like you aren't feeling this wavy feeling as you pedal. The motor isn't like ramping up, ramping down. It just sort of like ramps up and it stays there and waits. And if you completely stop pedaling, then it ramps back down. And that, that allows you to kind of connect your pedal strokes and that's fine it works pretty well but it doesn't always cut off as quickly as as i'd like and i've noticed that 
especially off-road if you're riding full suspension in technical environments this isn't this wouldn't be my choice because it's just it's not going to cut out as fast they do have motor inhibitors on the check Riga e-comp e-bike specific levers there's the motor inhibitor there and here's one here but they don't even cut out as fast as i was expecting and sometimes if you over tighten the rear axle and stuff that torque sensor can kind of it sometimes it's almost like it just sticks on like gently it's like i stopped i'm not pedaling and it's like in the background it's still like it's just giving me a little bit of the power when i don't really want it i want it to stop it's not that precise this is better for like fun tooling around cross country and stuff but i wouldn't take it like to the extreme environments um quick release on the front you can see traditional lever right there it's like 10 millimeter skewer so you're not getting like through axles or anything really robust and then back here we've got these proprietary plastic quick release arms where you kind of pull it out towards you and then turn it click it in and use it just like a socket wrench kind of thing and they've got those on both sides that's not very precise okay so if you're out there and you have to change a flat on these tires schwabby rapid robs they're nice but um i love that they have k guard at least it's you know some going to reduce the potential for flats 27.5 by uh, 2.25 so this this is a 650b design but anyways if you're out there and you get a flat or something and you're trying to crank on this yourself it's going to be hard to dial in that torque setting just perfectly so i would still take it to a shop or maybe mess around with it yourself it's just a little bit more finicky is what i'm getting at okay so it does have hydraulic disc brakes it's those tectra riga e-comp um, 180 millimeters up front 160 millimeters in the back they seem to work pretty well. A um, little torque arm here to give you even more uh, strength, given that this is a larger motor. I love that the spokes are black and they match the rims and everything. Also, it looks like there's like a hollow spindle down here. It's a decent setup. It's relatively light. It's fun. You're paying more than I think this is worth now, given that there are other bikes out there from high bike, from felt, that, that are really high quality even focus that have like the mid-drive and stuff for off-road riding mid-drive is where it's at and i still really love this for maybe riding around the city and just a little bit of trail riding it's zippy but now you don't have the throttle either and just some of the you know the fact that like this one's not working right now oh there there it went back to zero see how it says zero and it's just flashing that's the error i'm talking about and to fix that i just need to like swap this out with a battery from another one of the bikes and hope that the controller works and then the paint doesn't match and everything so little bit of a bummer there sorry that i can't go too much more into this or give you a full ride test i might ride it around just for fun you know it still rides just like a regular bike i've got enough gears here that i can kind of gear it down and handle myself uh, i do love that at least now you can charge the battery pack on the bike so you see there's the little charging port but i don't love how close they are to the cranks because if you forget and you're kind of moving the bike around or pedaling it will break it right off and when you back these bikes up the, the crank arms do turn just like most bikes you kind of back it up and the crank arms start start following you so be careful about that again no kickstand it's hard for me not to appreciate this bike just how beautiful it is um, but i think now that we're in 2015 2016 and we're seeing more competition come in with more refined designs this is sort of you know i it's just not as cool to me anymore um, maybe if it was a little bit cheaper but it's still a really expensive bike and you know i appreciate the components and stuff on it and you know some of the other innovations but i'm ready for for some updates and some fixes so i'm just pedaling around here i'm at the larger 40 tooth ring up front one of the lower gears in the back just because i'm not getting any assist i like the locking grips and the colors are pretty nice oh, look at this thing wow love that uh yeah display is pretty easy to reach if i were to be using it i'd be arrowing up or down to change assist levels um, a lot of times i would complain like oh with the twist throttle you have to arrow down to zero in order to use it but this one doesn't have a twist throttle it's all pedal assist so you might maximize your range a little bit better and again it's class one so it'd be permissible on more trails which is kind of nice Let's see if you can see any bob as i pedal I'm feeling a little bit, just a little bit. And you've got that rebound adjust so you can kind of tune things up. Okay, so this is how I usually leave my bikes without kickstands when I'm out on the trail. I try to lean it up against a tree sometimes, but you see I'm protecting my derailleur. It's not laying down on the right side. I've got my crank arm up so it can lay pretty far over and maybe rest on that front handlebar. But of course, one of the things you worry about is like, well, what about the extra cables for the, for the motor and stuff? One of the neat upgrades they've done 
for the newer Easy Motion Evo line is they've put the, the wire for the motor down here, just right next to that disc brake, but in front of the uh, quick release arm and that little torque arm right there. So it's run really close to the frame. It's pretty well protected and, and that's nice. That's a big upgrade from like the Neo uh, from years past. where it'd be nice to have assist. One of the other cool things about the internally geared hubs is not only are they light, relatively quiet and more affordable, but they freewheel nicely whoa so you don't have to worry about cogging and again they're just a little bit quieter than the geared motors they don't pull on the chain the sprocket the derailleur so you're not going to get that premature wear who man yeah it definitely makes me appreciate having a having a motor <laughs> with some of the other reviews so i'm inside charging i thought this would be the perfect time to go through the display panel it's the same for all of the easy motion bikes that use kind of the proprietary down tube and hub motor design, not the Bosch bikes, and this is only for 2014, 2015, 2016. So if we look at this display panel, you know, it's nice that you can remove it. First of all, you can pop it off like that, carry it around with you. And if you upgrade to this little Bluetooth module, and pop that in, sync it with your phone, and then use your phone as a display. And it's got GPS, route guidance, and in fact, I might cut to that and just show you what those features are. So I'm borrowing a phone and I'm inside so you can see the screen a little bit better, but if we launch the BH Premium app, uh, this is where you can adjust your settings. You've got a user profile, which includes all of your information, like your name, if you want, your weight, your height, your age, that kind of thing. You can switch between units too, which is neat, kind of metric or imperial. Bike profile, which is very cool. I mean, they go from wheel size, crank length, battery capacity, sensor connection, like the TMM4 torque sensing, um, and even like locate my bike settings. So you'll need that if you upgrade for like the theft prevention uh, for 249 bucks, it mounts kind of at the base of the battery interface. Uh, it's very cool because then it's locked in physically by the battery and it allows you to track it down. In addition to that $249 accessory, you still need to get like a SIM card. And it seems like most SIM cards would work. I think they're like 15 bucks, kind of like you'd use for a cell phone, but apparently it's not like a subscription service or at least that's not the information I got. And then connection status, system diagnostic, it can kind of go through and troubleshoot. So that's the background for setup. And then ride is, is really where it's at. This is like the GPS enabled feature. Manual is just, hey, I want to go here. And it's a map and it tells you just like Google Maps or Waze or any of those. Automatic is kind of a, another level of cool. It basically senses how much battery you have, how much you're using, and it automatically adjusts so that you can arrive without running out of juice. I really like that, I think that's cool. And then automatic is also very cool. BH, you know, it's this company that's been around since 1909 and they, they make a lot of fitness equipment. It's not just bicycles or electric bikes. And one of the areas that they also uh, make, I guess would do a lot of products in is exercise equipment. And some of those have heart rate monitors and different sensors and stuff. So they've integrated that really well here where you can say, hey, I don't want to exceed 155 or 140 or whatever beats per minute automatically give me power when I need it. So it's like you're getting exercise, but you're not exhausting yourself. You can go out there and ride it just like it's an exercise bike, but in the real world. I think that's, that's pretty fantastic. I think Polaris and Falco have done similar things in the past, uh, but BH, I think that, you know, they've really mastered it with some of their exercise equipment. So to see it on this app here, 
It's just very cool. And then this is what the map looks like. You can kind of tap and do a starting point and then an ending point and change the resistance level and everything. It's a sweet app, you know, if you take a little bit of time to, to dig into it and if you get that $149 accessory. The only complaint I have on that, again, is just that then you don't really have a display. Like, this kind of becomes your display. And I feel like, I don't know, I wouldn't always want this there. There's no USB port to plug in, so your phone is going to be connected via Bluetooth. And by the way, it seems like it's AMP Plus compatible with the whole heart rate thing. But you know, this is there now, it's a little bit big. Uh, maybe I just wanna glance over and see how much, how fast I'm going. And what I'm looking at here might be like the GPS map thing. So I don't know, it's, it, it, maybe there's some refinement that could happen, but it's cool to see them introducing an app like this. Okay, so we're back at the normal display right here. I love that it comes with a little pouch, kind of keeps it from getting scuffed up. As you can see, this one might've been put face down on a table and it's a little bit gnarly, but working pretty well. If we hold the power button, it does take a little bit longer, so just keep holding it, be patient. Kind of boots up and gives us some information about the bike. The first thing you see here is speed in miles per hour. And then over here, we've got total, distance, time, and top speed. So that's like all time top speed, <laughs> 11 miles per hour, awesome. And then we've got just this trip. So this trip, how far have we gone? How long have we been riding? And then what's our top speed? And then there's this other setting here. It's like M to go. I, I feel like that's a range thing, but I haven't quite figured it out. Down here, we can see a battery level indicator. Three out of five bars right now, about 55%. I like that they include the percentage as well. It's just a little bit more precise. And then assist level. We're at the highest right now at 100%, but we can arrow down to 70, 50, 30, or zero. And that's kind of cool because their bikes, they're designed to be more like a bicycle with more gears and just really set up to almost look like a regular bicycle too. So riding them around tends to be pretty efficient. It's, it's nice to just use this as a cycle computer, potentially to power the lights if the model has that. Okay, so to enter the settings, what we would do is hold plus and minus for a couple seconds. Now it would let us select our wheel size. We could arrow up or arrow down. This one's a 29er actually, so I'm gonna arrow up a little bit. 29 and hit power and it kind of locks it in. Unit, miles per hour, but of course we could go to kilometers per hour. And I'm gonna lock it in at miles. And then this snow setting. So this is kind of cool. Right now, this one, I'm looking at the Evo Snow 29 Pro. And of course we want all the wheels going all the time. And that's kind of a cool setting. It gives you some extra traction. If we arrow down just front wheel drive, so it's gonna be more efficient, maybe extend your range, but not give you quite as good of traction. And then rear, that's the 350 watt motor, and that one's gonna give you just kind of the traditional ride akin to some of the older Evos and even the Neo models. So 350 watt, 250 watt on this particular model. Or you can turn it just off. And this, I think this just defaults to rear wheel drive. So I think that's a little bit redundant with rear and off seeming to do the same things, but regardless, that's what that does. So we'll lock it in and then we can select the battery size. So it's funny, sometimes on these demo bikes, I've been seeing that it says 8.7 amp hour. Sometimes it's a little bit less. You can actually find that written right on the battery pack. So if we come back over to this one, that's not on the bike, and we flip it around like this, we can see that it says 48 volts, 8.7 amp hours down here. So that's, that's the amp hours. So we'd go back to the display and uh, lock it in at 8.7 and now we're back to wheel size so once you've done that you're all set and you're like yep i don't want to change anything i'm ready to kind of lock it hold the power button again for quite a while and that had me concerned i thought it was going to shut the thing off but it doesn't it just sort of leaves that menu and now we're back at the main display oh and this is backlit so if you hold down see how it comes to life like that and you get the little icon right there that would also activate our lights if we were riding something like this over here. We've got the Evo City, it's got the built-in lights. So that's pretty nice, nice little extra feature. So this is the Easy Motion Evo Charger. Works for any of the bikes. It's two amp output, which is kind of standard. I like that you can unplug the wall side if you want to, just to make it a little bit cleaner if you're packing it in your backpack, that kind of thing. It gives you a little bit of extra length as well. You can see if we follow this all the way down here, We've got the end connected that plugs right into the battery pack. So this is cool for if it's a really cold or really 
hot day and you want to bring the battery inside or maybe you're charging at work so you bring that inside you plug it in with the charger and top it off really love that they've got an led indicator on it so you can tell how full it is in case you haven't ridden for a while it might slowly drop over time but then if you want to you can charge the battery right on the bike and that's what i tend to do i'll leave my bike you know in my room i don't tend to park it outside just because it's a little bit more sensitive with all the different components and it kind of a high value product so in order to do that you disconnect the little dongle just try not to lose that and now this end you can go ahead and plug directly into the bike right there on the chain stay on the left hand side but in order to get it in you kind of have to you push it in line it up right and then there's this little wings on the side and you've got to tighten it down kind of like half a turn and it kind of locks it into place so it's it's cool because it feels you know solid once it's in however what i've noticed about these bikes is that if you push it back like maybe you're trying to get it out of the way you push it back the crank arms kind of slowly go back and uh, uh, that's what you don't want to do because it's going to break it off because it's really connected well same thing with the keys a lot of the keys kind of fold and they stay mostly out of the way but it just seems like you know there's a lot here that could get damaged with those crank arms even the kickstands a couple times you can see this one has some abrasions on the side of it that's because people were moving the bikes around like this backing it up you can see that crank arm coming down and then uh right there you know and so it stops the bike but it's also potentially enough force if you really pushed it to kind of bend or break that off so you just want to be conscious both when you're charging this about not losing that and then also about not breaking off the key the charging port or the kickstand another really cool option that they're selling now is this neoprene sleeve it's almost like a wetsuit material and it's designed to keep the battery a little bit warmer or at least protect it from the cold so they say anytime it's below 60 degrees outside this is going to help extend your range potentially by up to 30 percent just by keeping the battery a little bit warmer and i feel like there's some caveats there i mean it must be like if the battery was stored inside and it's already warm if the whole bike was stored inside and it's already warm if you leave this in your garage and the bike is super cold overnight like that's kind of hard on the cells and it's already going to be cold I, I don't feel like this is going to it's going to just insulate the cold so i would try to keep that at sort of a neutral cool dry location and then potentially get yourself one of these it's 35 bucks and it's just got a zipper on it so i'll go ahead and try to mount that real quick almost like a real wetsuit. Not super easy to do. Just a little bit of screwing around. It's a pretty handsome accessory. I don't think I've seen anything like this on any other electric bikes. That's cool. It's got the branding and everything. Apparently they're pretty popular in Canada and some of the Scandinavian countries where it gets cold and people are actually trying to make their own um, out of this different materials and stuff and I haven't tested I'm here in Southern California at the BH North America headquarters hanging out in their ginormous storage warehouse checking out all the new models for 2016 um, I just think that's cool wanted to call out give you a close-up on that and it should work with most of their models at least the Evo models it's not gonna work with the easy go models because they have the little pouch style backpack nor will it work with the Bosch um, system because as you can see it's sort of an externally mounted battery pack but yeah for the other ones that's what it looks like for the full write-up on this i'll see you back at electricbikereview.com i've done the dimensions and everything some measurements to check out you can leave some comments and of course have fun ride safe